Years Later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Laura Croft Tomb Raider. It was released on June 15, 2001, so does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> May, Thursday. What year? No, what? Year is it? This is the first video game movie ever on years later, I think. I may have missed some, but either way, Tomb Raider will be the first one, and man, oh boy. Now, a brief history on Tomb Raider. I've only played the old games back on Windows 98, a very old PC. I remember playing those games. And so before the newer games, the, the one that would reboot it and not have her be eye candy, that's all Laura Croft was. At least to me, from my perspective, I was like, that was the hot chick that could do badass things. And I remember this people back in the day, maybe even now, look at them how to like mod Tomb Raider back in the old games so she could be naked. It. what kind of you know what this movie is playing into the fact that they cast like angelina jolie who's very beautiful playing into that and so what you get is a good looking film mediocre at best but a fun one to watch because i do have some fun with this movie there are some ridiculous ass shit in this movie like that one scene where she's doing acrobatics big ass house bother because she's rich main villain powwell or something asks his team of ages and misfits to go after her that whole sequence is hilariously just ridiculous her jumping rope to rope acrobatics stuff to rain on the walls it is kind of dumb but fun to watch and then speaking on the villain powell powell something like that it doesn't even matter the villain just kind of sucks he's kind of there like every movie and specifically video game movie they all suck this one the only thing that's interesting is that he's a part of the illuminati <laughs> So this whole movie, Angelina Jolie, all the actors are a part of the Illuminati confirmed uh, whole anatomy whatsoever. So it is confirmed. So, but essentially he's part of this Illuminati organization. It's totally non-secret and secret at the same time. And apparently her father, played by Uncle Ben, I don't know the actor's name, but Uncle Ben's in this movie. He is the father of Angelina Jolie's Laura Croft. And I'm starting to notice he's just in like every late 90s and early 2000s films. Sam Raimi, Spider-Man, Mission Ajah Salman, Mission Impossible, Tomb Raider now. So it's a, uh, you know, Uncle Ben just in everything. He's probably much more but i just know him from barter man as uncle ben but apparently he was a part of this organization as well and all of the manipulation and lies and whatnot i don't know who's telling the truth really do not care after i saw that well not that like acrobatic sequence but the very first sequence of her training with that robot and flippy flips and whatnot that was like okay this sets a expectation for me for this film just to kind of somewhat turn off my brain and just watch it for what it is which is just ridiculous stuff and pretty angelina jolie that's really it i mean not much is there for this movie to be quite honest laura croft also has a team with her she has her her butler like an alfred where he brings her food some drinks here and there and then her nerd tech super smart guy that creates the ai and robot and everything both are useless to the outside world but it's useful to laura croft because they are probably paid to work for her she needs help she needs that extra aid to doing her acrobatics flippy flips and then laura croft's whole storyline and arc is the fact that she wants a second chance with her father uncle ben tragically died and so throughout the film she wants to be with them there's a special item within her own house that's like a clock thing or a clock power she brings it to the wrong person it interests the wrong people they want it for very bad things and power and then that's when her whole journey starts finding out throughout that her father isn't really the man that she used to know he is um again a part of the illuminati which is just really really ridiculous and dumb but she doesn't quite believe it and i think I'm, i may have missed it but i think it is left kind of open air whether the father was a part of the secret organization or not maybe he was having secret ties to very secret and very dangerous people or maybe from laura cross perspective he is just a family man maybe he's just that father that tragically died wrong time wrong place and she wants that back and that's what this whole mcguffin clock tower power thing is and it could give her a second chance but you know she doesn't choose that there's that scene of him talking directly to her well hold on there's two scenes that really stand out for me of uncle ben talking with her within her own mind of this whole mcguffin item thing and then he's like narrating and talking to the camera facing the camera that felt really weird to me i mean he was obviously talking to the audience but it was like why is it though i, I don't know he was just narrating there could have been like a montage or something and he could have been narrating that oh yeah your boy daniel Craig's in his mood. What are you? Good guy or bad guy? James Bond himself currently as of recording this in 2021 is in his movie that was just kind of like whoa what the heck James Bond is in this film he's just a henchman to this bad guy the main bad guy but it was still fun seeing him just kind of doing nothing essentially like this is five years before he's James Bond pre-Bond playing like a completely different character with a very different voice and I believe him and Laura Croft have a thing for each other before this movie like they have a talk in the hallway talking about their past or whatnot comes back later on that he's working all well and she finds out and all that stuff there's some history 
between the two but they don't dive way into it cool seeing Daniel Craig and there was a like set expectation for me because here's the thing most out of all the mo video game movies I've seen most of them have sucked so going into this one I just expected the same and it kind of exceeded my expectations where it's not an amazing movie but it's mediocre at best you know it's like okay it's not it's a decent well made film it's not horribly made funded and it has a budget there's some ridiculous shit with the sequences Laura Croft doing some stuff two shower scenes because why not really bad villain and this movie should have been horrible and I don't think it's horrible and a part of that is kind of that corny cringy ridiculous charm to it where a lot of dumb things happen and you're gonna enjoy it or not enjoy it and I enjoyed some of it where it's like okay acrobatics running a wall a lot of flippy flips double stunts clearly you know losing a father wanting him back okay we've seen that before like it shouldn't have worked and it doesn't but it works to an extent but not all the way through and so because of that it did exceed my expectations and the movie tries with the whole uncle ben father thing and they really do try it doesn't work because i just truly really do not care about it they really try so laura croft tomb raider 20 years later does not hold up but if you enjoy some dumb stuff this is the movie for you so in that case it holds up if you enjoy dumb ridiculous stuff but if you don't this movie does not hold up and it's not for you whatsoever so that's it for me this has been the road so far and